So there are many ways to make a fill milk with S-Log, but my favorite one is get the orange. So today we're going to do it from this to this. <laughs> How's it going people? Welcome back to another new episode of The Scenes and thank you for tuning in again. So first, thanks for a lot of views and comments on my videos. Really appreciate it. So last time I uploaded the vlog and today I'd like to pick up this orange film look scene for this episode. So today I'm going to show you guys how to make contrasty orange film look in DaVinci Resolve. Okay, as always, let me pass the microphone to the guy who does the color and let's breathe a new life into the footage. Enjoy. Hi right, guys, welcome back. Okay, first, let's take a look at this footage. So this is S-Log2 from Sony a 7 III. As you can see, there is a huge window right here and I'm using this to make a warm, classic orange mood for this shot. So this window will be the key this time. Okay, so this is the node tree. So this area is basic and those are look. And from here, those are spice to make this scene better. Okay, first, let me decide the total temperature and tint of this image. The reason why I do this before contrast and exposure is that I want to set the main color first. And based on that, I'm going to continue to color grade the whole image. So the easiest way to change the color is temperature and tint, temp and tint. So this time I want an orange and a little bit of green. So I'm getting more orange by using this temp, just maybe like this and a little bit of green, just a little bit. Okay. And also using this offset, shift this to red side. Yep, something like this. And maybe also shift this gamma to red side too, but just a little bit. See if I do this before and after, before, after, it's already making the mood. So next, moving to primaries. And here, I'm going to give it the basic contrast. So right here, I'll answer the question I got, which is why do I use this easy contrast and saturation? Well, the answer is because they're easy to use. You know, I get basic contrast with this and see what should I do about details. For example, right now, I'm going to gain this contrast until I get it enough like maybe 1.2 will work something like this so now look at this image huh. i want more clear separation of shadow and highlights but also i don't want to crush it so right here i'm using this pivot to get more light just like this now it's getting more light and also boost this gain like this yep also gamma Yep, much better. And bring lift down to make shadow more darker. Now it's more contrasty, very punchy, very good. And now I feel highlight on this window is kind of too much. So I'm gonna lower this highlight. Just like this. And at the last, I'm giving the saturation with this. Yeah, this will work. Something like this. Hope it helps. So next one is HDR tool. So right here, let's deep dive into this highlight. So I'm using a new feature of DaVinci Resolve 17, which is HDR tool, a uh, high dynamic range. As you can see, there are many wheels right here, like a dark shadow light and highlight and specular. So this tool allows you to control very specific areas of exposure. And the cool thing about this tool is that you can decide the range by yourself. So first, select this logo and hit shift plus H and select whatever you want. For example, I'm selecting the highlight and you can set the range of this highlight by moving this bar like this. So I want to apply this on window. So find a spot where I can select it. And I'm going to lower this highlight just like this. And also apply this light on skin and other highlight area. Let me see what I can do. I think somewhere around this and boost this light. And at last, I'm going to apply this specular on this uh, brightest highlights of this image. 
which is this practical light. So just find the spot, which is yeah, around right here. And of course, I'm going to lower it. Yeah, something like this. So right now, if I do before and after, again, this is before, after, before, after. Well, now I just gain the light and skin without losing details and window. So like this, you can control the detail of light. Very powerful tool. But to me, I don't know if I'm going to use this every time because I feel it's just, you know, overkilling for just a vlog or something like that. But definitely sometimes it's so powerful. So now we are getting into the look. But before messing around with colors, let's pull the skin out first. So this time I think it's gonna be a little bit tricky because the skin and other things such as this practical light are sharing like the same colors like this orange and yellow. But what I need is only the color on skin. So first I'll make the circle mask over the face. Just like this and feather this out. And now actually using a qualifier to pull the key. Yeah, I guess this is all right. And add some denoise. Like this. And add some blur. Okay, this is good. So first, let's make the balance even. So first, I'm going to shift this gain to get rid of too much of yellow and red. Something like this. And giving a little bit of magenta on skin by using this gamma and lower the mitten detail to make it smoother very good and give it extra light by boosting mid area of this curve something like this and at last by using hue versus saturation right here and i'm gonna make point on red and yellow because right now the saturation on skin is too much, so I'm, I'm just going to lower this a little bit. So right now, if I do before and after, this is before, after, before, after. Yeah, it's back. Okay, now let's do the log wheels. Here, the game changes. By the way, because we pull the skin out before, no matter what you do, nothing will affect on this skin. See? So only I'm going to use is log wheels as always. That's it. So first I'm going to shift this mid tone to red side. And also highlight to yellow. I'll stop right here. And moving shadow to cyan. Probably around here, not too much. And as the small spice, I'll get some contrast. Just like this. Okay, this is before and after. Before, after. So next, I think I'm going to focus on this window. So I'm going to pull the key of this window. So shift H and using the qualifier. So this will be easy. Yeah, I guess this is alright. And I'm gonna give it blur. Like this. Okay, good. So first, I'm gonna lower the highlight a little bit. Just like this. And shift this gamma to yellow side. Yep, something like this. So now, I think I want a little bit more like a cream, like a juicy cream on this window. So instead of using gain or highlight, I'm going to use this gamma. Just boost it a little bit. Very good. And at last, I'm going to lower the mid-tone detail, but a little bit, just like this. All right. So this is before and after, before, after. You know, this small change helps the story and vibes. You know, to me, this window is very important. Like without this node, yeah, it's just normal. But with this, it's more heavier and kind of serious, very film look. Just love it. So from here, I'm going to add some spices to make this scene more better. Okay, first in this node, vignette, I'm going to create the rectangle mask just like this. Just making the mask like this and adjust the size. 
and I'm gonna blur this out and invert it and I'm going to curve and I'm gonna lower this mid area just like this as you go down it's getting so dark and as you go up it's getting you know bright what I'm doing just lower this all the way down to emphasize this guy I mean this in the middle area by bringing the exposure down to before after now it's much easier to focus on this guy i mean this middle area so to me this is how the vignette works and next one is extra light so again make a rectangle mask just like this just same as before vignette yep, and i'm gonna blur this out of course this time i'm not gonna invert because i want to apply what i'm gonna do on this area so going to curve and this time i'm gonna boost the light by bringing this up i'm gonna stop right here and just in case i'm gonna lower the midtone detail just like this and at the last i'm going to do some final adjustment for this shot so i'm using this log shadow just bring this down a little bit Yep, this is enough. So that was all to get this look from this flat log from this to this. So I'm gonna turn off all of this and let me take you to the journey of all processes we did this time one by one. Go. happy with this now my job is done like this i'll give this back to you okay welcome back guys i believe that was a little bit long but i hope it was helpful so i guess some of you guys are using sony cameras like sony a7 III me too now we got alpha one and something like fx3 is coming up but no matter what you shoot with the basic is really important before you going into the log wheels the base is important before you going to color grade your shooting is important yeah maybe some shooting tutorials the camera setting tutorials next time maybe someday yes what do you think Okay, this is it. If you have any questions about this color grading, don't hate to leave in the comment below. And if you have any requests for next scenes, also leave in the comment below. So today's topic is pretty much it and thank you for watching this video. If you like this scene, show me a thumb and uh, hit the subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode. ほら、あの、iMac なんで大切だろうと大切ではなかろうとバックアップを取ることをお勧めいたします。それではまた次回の動画でお会いいたしましょう。